Okay. All right. Um, we just uh, continuing uh, part uh, part three of come out of her, my people, and don't with the subtopic of don't drink the Mickey in our primary text. We began. If you can turn over to the Book of Revelation. Chapter 18. And I'll turn right to it. Right to it. <laughs> and that's um, Chapter 18, verse 4. We already had this, but just want to you know, just go back to that one verse because we're actually going to um, branch off into, into different segments and define different pieces along, along the way to make sure there's no questions. But in verse 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Um, I touched on some points last week as far as her. And I didn't want to make sure that, I want to make sure that there's no questions in the saints' mind as far as her um, and who that is. Um, in Genesis 3, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Uh, we know that story, just our paraphrasing. It says, And the woman said unto the serpent, uh, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. And then dropping down to verse 14 and 15, it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Um, I want to just spend just a few moments just defining scripturally who the her is uh, in Genesis, who the her is, and come out of her my people, compared to the pure woman that God's going to define in Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, in Revelation chapter 12, so uh, we have a clear picture scripturally, again, who the Bible is talking about when it's dealing with uh, the her concerning the things of God and uh, the her and the things of the world that we should avoid. Uh, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. And again, if you're taking notes, you can uh, give yourself, write yourself a little sidebar note. And, um, you know, we're just looking at the her pertaining to the woman of God, chapter 6, verse 2, and the her as far as who the Bible is referring to when it says, come out of her, my people. Good evening, Mother Morgan. Good evening. God bless you. Glad to see you. <laughs> it is as cold as it was. Yes, it is. So when you find Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, please say, say amen. Amen. And again, me. I will destroy the daughter of Zion, so beautiful and delicate. Shepherds with their flocks will come against her. They will pitch their tents around her, each tending his own portion. Prepare for battle against her. Arise, let us attack at noon. But at well, that, uh, we'll go back to Jeremiah 6, starting verse 2 again. Okay. I will destroy the daughter of Zion. <laughs> Okay, so he has different Bibles. Yeah, okay. I have. A, I had an NIV. Okay, okay. Oh, my right, I should, I should, I should that's fine. That's fine. Well. Yeah, okay. Read it again. Then I'm gonna have uh, Lady Harris read it um, also in the King James. All right, what verses two? Yes, just just verse two. That's it. Okay. I will destroy the daughter of Zion, so beautiful and delicate. Okay, and then read it out of the King James, Lady Harris. I have likened the daughter of Zion 
to a comely and delicate woman. Okay, so we see that the woman here is defined as who? The daughter of Zion. 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 Okay, let's go further to the word to see who Zion is. We see that, um, you know, he uh, said, I liken the daughter of Zion as to a comely and delicate woman. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 51, verse 16, to see who is Zion. Good evening, evangelists. Good evening. We're, we're just taking the time to hey. starting, hey. picking apart different different pieces, and we're just looking at the come out of her, and who is the woman of God is, is represented by the pure church. And we yeah. just came out of Genesis 3, verse 14 and 15, where God said he'll put enmity between her seed and thy seed, which is defining who the her is, in case anyone had any questions. Isaiah chapter. Uh, Isaiah chapter 51, verse 16. So we're looking at her as far as the, in the things of God and the things of the world that we've been admonished to avoid. So when you find that, say amen, and please read verse, uh, chapter 51, verse 16, defining who now Zion is. Zion was the delicate woman, and now we need to see who Zion defined in Scripture. So you want to find that, and say amen. You can begin reading Isaiah chapter 51, verse 16. And I have, hold on, let's do it. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, that say unto Zion, thy, thou art my people. Okay, so Zion is who? God's people. God's people. And I would say, all right. Say unto Zion, Thou art my people. So in breaking it down, um, we first got to uh, Zion as a indicative of a delicate and comely woman. Then we see that Zion is the people of God. Zion is you and I. Amen. The Bible says, you know, uh, you know, Zion is referring to you know God's elect. Amen. Amen. God's chosen. So in, in in looking at this, you know, we've we we, we looked at that. Um, and broke that down. Now I want to give a picture of God's pure church in Revelation chapter 12. Someone find, uh, once you find chapter 12, Revelation 12, please read for me. Someone read verses 1 and 2, and someone read verses 3 and 4. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Amen. So what are some, some classifications of the, the woman of Zion? She is clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. And she has 12 crowns. She has a head, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Amen. And we'll look at that a, a little bit more. Someone also give me verses 3 and 4 now. And there appear another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head, upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So this is uh, uh, a woman that we can see is uh, in need of God's God's uh, protection, God's provision. Um, we see the woman uh, here having having dual representation. As we know, uh, Mary, Christ was born of the Virgin birth through the Virgin Mary. So it, it's giving us a confirmation as far as you know Christ being born uh, through the womb of a woman. But also, it's just highlighting again a picture of God's perfect church. So if you look here, there's a woman. Um, uh, clothed with the sun, just you know, just, just God's righteousness, mm -hmm. you know, God's holiness. 
uh, the moon under her feet. She she has her crown. We, we know once the people of God make it the glory that we're going to receive a crown, the Bible Amen. tells us. Amen. Amen. We're going to receive a crown. It's just, just painting a basic picture of purity and holiness. Um, we're going to compare this woman here, which is going to represent God's true church, to what the apostate church looks like. And some warnings that God gives us concerning that. And then we'll be able to see the difference between, you know, God's chosen, God's elect, and also, you know, what we're to steer from and steal clear from the world. So all we're doing now is just defining, uh, up until this point, uh, Zion being the people of God, and that God's people, uh, we are to represent holiness, purity, sanctification, you know, to walk in righteousness, amen, amen. amen and just be born, washed in the blood, amen, and filled with God's precious spirit, amen. And let's see what kind of church God is coming back for. Um, yes, Lady Harris. Okay, because you had us read 3 and 4 as well, and 12. Are you saying that 3 and 4 also describes 1 and 2? Well, 3 and 4, the, the end of 4, where it says, And the cast into the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman. So it's going back to that piece there, is which you want to concentrate on verse 4. <laughs> So for the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. That's just going back literally, of course, to the birth of Christ through the Virgin Mary. Okay, but three and four doesn't describe, well, three does not describe one and two as you know, far as that being. No, you're right. We, we just, we just uh, read okay. verses one through four together. You, we didn't say anything about those two. We read them, so I'm going yes. to uh, Remember when we were talking last Thursday? about the um, papal Rome and all that, and how we talked about it, you know, were out the saints mm -hmm. of God. That's what it's describing there. That fiery dragon, remember I talked about the dragon, one of those scriptures we talked about last week? That's what it's talking about. And when it says that it was there, ready to devour that baby, that was that church, that, that new church that was forming. The enemy was like, oh no, honey, you ain't getting walking around here. Oh, okay. That's what that's talking about. But it's but the the woman that it is talking about is the true church. So that's okay. how you know about that. So you were saying make emphasis on <laughs> verses four as far as um, talking about the woman. The woman they deliver. Okay. Yeah, but then I still thank you for clearing up the way it's Verse three is in part uh, now that that that's that's we have to be clear to make sure I don't wanna make sure y'all don't, don't lose sight <coughs> is that that specifically right there in verse 4 is dealing with the birth of Christ the itself. Christ, that's the church. Yeah, and how, um, how uh, Herod went to devour him specifically. Mm -hmm. So that specific part of verse 4 is dealing with the birth of Christ through his mother Mary. Verse 4. Excuse me. Yes. Did you say Herod? Mary. Right. Oh, Mary. Mary. Oh, okay. Yes. No, Christ wasn't born through Herod. <laughs> All right, so again, I, there's a lot we can dig into, but without going too deep in that, we're just still highlighting the pure, verse 12 highlights the pure church of Christ, the church of God. You mean that, chapter 12? I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 specifically, is just still pinpointing uh, the true church of God and how she's adorned compared to the church we're about to look at in Revelation 17. So I don't want you to take too much more for that because it, it would take me time, which I will do eventually, to dig deeper into um, the 12 stars and the moon under her feet and um, the dragon we know being Satan and different things like that. But do we, okay. do we see a pure picture of God's church? Amen. Pure holiness Amen. and righteousness. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 27. I want you all to look and see what kind of uh, church God is coming back for. Ephesians 5, 27. Oh, this is the church of God's fire right here. Right? Yes. Let us, we're going to go back to verse 25. Let's um, start verse 25 and drop down through verse 27. So I'm fine to say amen and begin reading. Amen. <clears throat> Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, 